What's going on, smart people? Welcome back to another episode of Drinking and Deriving, a series premiere. A couple of videos ago, I went over how to diagonalize a matrix by using a unitary matrix, and we took a look at this relationship, where we constructed a unitary matrix out of the eigenvectors of some matrix A, multiplied everything out, and saw that when you did that, you get a diagonal matrix of A's eigenvalues. Well, that's what we're deriving today. It's a bit of a formal derivation, a bit too formal for my taste, so I had to find a way to casualize this whole thing, hence the drinking and deriving, but let's get started. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to agree upon what direction is north, south, east, and west. We need a basis for A, so let's go ahead and say that A is characterized by some basis vectors E sub I. And we want to know how A changes if you change the basis vectors. But we have the freedom to choose whatever basis vectors we want. And we're going to choose them such that our new basis will be the eigenvectors of A. So in other words, we're going to call those x sub j. And that's going to be a linear combination of a sum over i, this weird thing that I'm calling sij times e sub i. Uh, so this is going to be the jth eigenvector of A. And then we have this weird thing called Sij. We wanted to find what this coefficient is. Well, Sij is defined to be the ith component in the old basis of the jth eigenvector. Okay, so here yeah, is actually a bit more inconvenient than I thought it would be. This e sub i, these e sub i are the old basis. But what the hell does that mean? Don't worry, I'm going to break it down for you. Sij, that's just a matrix element. So let's go ahead and build a matrix out of it. We'll call it S. So S is equal to, let's make it a square matrix, let's do 3 by 3. So we got S11. Two one, two two, two three, s three one, s three two, s three three. So these are our sij. Uh, so what this says is the ith component in the old basis of the jth eigenvector. J corresponds to columns. So that what that's telling us is that each column here is an eigenvector of a. Okay, that's probably important. I should have written that of a. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so we're looking at the ith component of the jth eigenvector. So say we're looking at S12, and say we're working in like Cartesian coordinates or something like that. S12 is just the x component of x2, right? x2, these are our eigenvectors. It's the x component of this. Maybe we can expand this out just to be a little bit more clear. So say we want to talk about the second eigenvector of A. That would be x2. Well, we're still summing over i, so that's going to be s12 e1 plus s22 e2 plus s32 e3, where these are our old basis. So the x component of this, or 1, corresponds to the x component of this basis vector. There we go. But before we go any further, we need to talk about what it means to transform from vectors in one basis to being represented in another. And then by extension, we'll find out what it means for a matrix to do the exact same thing. So we'll put this off to the side. Okay, here, here we just showed that we can construct basis vectors out of a linear combination of the old basis vectors. They don't have to be eigenvectors. What makes this whole thing special at the end is that they are. But we can define some new basis vectors, say e sub j prime equal to a linear combination sum over i s i j e i. But we can also construct any regular vector as a linear combination of its basis vectors. So in other words, x, some vector x, is just a sum over i of x i e sub i. But if we were to change basis, that x could still be characterized by a linear combination of its new basis vectors. The coefficients in the front probably won't be the same, but you can still do it nonetheless. In other words, x could be written as a sum over j of x j prime e sub j prime. But if we just substitute in our definition of e sub j prime, we get that x is equal to the sum over j 
xj prime, and then the sum over i, sij ei. And then we can pick out a component if we want of x, say we want the ith component. Well, then we're not summing over i anymore because we're, we want one specific one. So we could say that xi is equal to the sum over j of xj prime, sij. In other words, sum over j, sij, and then uh, xj prime. Well, since these are the components, we can write this in a matrix form by saying that x is equal to s matrix acting on x prime. Yes. Assuming all of the necessary assumptions, like s is invertible and stuff, then we can write that x prime is equal to s inverse on s. Okay, and then now let's write some operator equation for some new matrix A. So let's let A acting on x equal y. So we're just operating on our vector x, which spits out the new vector y. And then we have in our new basis, so this is in the old basis, in our new basis, A prime, x prime equals y prime. Well, when it comes to these variables, we know how these variables transform in the new basis because we have this here. So x is equal to s on x prime, which means that y is equal to s on y prime. So we can substitute that in here and for y, and x we know is just s x prime. So we have uh, a s x prime is equal to s y prime. Awesome. Okay, and then we can multiply both sides by the inverse of s again, so we get s inverse a s x prime is equal to y. And this should be a y prime, sorry about that. Okay, and then here, shit. <laughs> Don't drink and derive, kids, I keep messing up. This is a y prime. Okay, and then, so we have this expression for y prime, and then we also have this expression for y prime. So we get a prime x prime equals y prime. So these two are equivalent, which means that s inverse a s x prime is equal to a prime x prime. In other words, we derive what's known as a similar transformation. s inverse a s is equal to a prime. And this is what we need in order to continue with this side of the board. And as you can see, it's starting to look a little bit similar here. Really what we're saying is we're going to transform A into our new basis using this transformation. And what's going to happen is that our new representation of A prime, this new matrix A prime, is just going to be a diagonal of A's eigenvalues. It's going to be wild. All right. This is a matrix. Okay, don't get it twisted. And we're interested in the matrix elements of this because this is a prime in the that's how it goes new basis okay so we need to calculate what these matrix elements are but now we know that s is now characterized by the eigenvectors of a here we didn't make those assumptions and this is where all of the power is but here we have like a column vector x sub j but now we're interested in a square matrix so rows and columns so here we summed over one index increase the dimensionality, we now need to sum over 2. So we can say s inverse a s i j is equal, let's pick two dummy variables, let's call it k and l. Uh, so that's going to be s inverse i k a k l s uh, l j. But what is this? What is SLJ? It's just the elf component of the jth eigenvector. So SLJ is equal to, well here is our jth eigenvector, we're looking at the elf component. So we can substitute this in. S inverse of IK AKL and then XJ L. Sure, you could be super nitpicky and argue over what should be a covariant, what should be a contravariant index, but if you're dealing with like orthonormal basis vectors, it really doesn't matter. Um, so here, well, we know what A acting on X sub J is because we know XJ is an eigenvector of A. This is where the powerfulness comes in because this is just going to spit out a lambda J since this is an eigenvector of A. 
And then uh, we're summing over L first, so the L is going to contract. So this is going to give us, we're going to get rid of that sum now. Sum over K, S inverse, I K. And then AKL acting on this is going to give us a lambda J. And then we're contracting this, so it's going to spit out our eigenvalue times our eigenvector again. And then we're contracting with L, so this is going to be X, J, K. And this right now is just S, K, J, right? It's the kth component of the jth eigenvector. Okay, so that is equal to sum over K of S inverse I K times S K J lambda J. So uh, what do we know? How do I want to say that? So we know multiplying these components together is either going to give us a one or a zero since these are inverses of each other. So in other words, if k, no, if i is not equal to j, it's going to give us a zero, and it's going to give us a one if i equals j. So in other words, again, <laughs> this is equal to lambda j delta i j. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next, I will be proving the Riemann hypothesis, just kidding, when pigs fly and then an Euleroid passes by. Let me know in the comments section what I should drink and derive next. I'll see you guys there.